movies and things and I me almost dying and you almost dying and me being front row and SmackDown and you going to shows and I'm going to shows and he's going to shows and you're a ho! It's a show by Chris and Neil with all great movies. They are the real deal. We watch them all so you don't have to. It's movies that don't suck and some that do. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of all ages, welcome to a new episode of Movies That Don't Suck and Some That Do! My name is Neil. I'm Chris. Yeah, we're gonna see it like it's the 80s. No, we're not doing that. No, we're not no. Gonna do that. <laughs> I, I, I don't. That man, you would think I'm like, like caffeine, and I'm not. I'm not even like I've only had two sips of a beer. I'm not even like got a buzz going yet. We'll get there. Maybe it's just because man, I've been locked inside all week, dude. We'll talk about that mm-hmm. in a second. First, let's talk about two movies that we will be talking about today. Uh, first, we will be uh, seeing the. We're talking a movie. That has the great um, Matt Dilton and uh, Ben Affleck in it. Oh, no. Um, Matt Damon, Casey Affleck. Oh, uh, whatever. They're <laughs> close. That was very close. Uh, first, Matt Damon is in the film of the instigators. Well, well, that's plenty wise. We know what we're holding and we know what you're holding. <laughs> the fuck you know what we all got. Summer clerkship in your office says I know what you're holding. I don't bet with jobs like that. Let's just say I'll put you at the top of the list if you're right. Okay. <clears throat> well, you were looking for that third three, but you forgot that Professor Green folded it on 4th Street, and now you're representing it. You have it. Um, the DA made his two pair, but he knows they're no good. Judge Kaplan was trying to squeeze out a diamond flush, but he came up short, and Mr. Eisen is futilely hoping that his queens are going to stand up. <laughs> so, like I said, the dean's bet is $20. Well, kiss my ass. <laughs> it's from Rounders. Yeah, which they're working on a sequel right now. You know, it's it's strange that you know Matt Damon. He's played like two like super smart characters. Pretty soon after that, we'll do one thing. He basically did the same thing. Like that same sort of like he's gonna go through it. But so so wait wait wait. So the Rounders is the first one. I'm guessing the Martian. Good one hunting. The the guy we bought a zoo. Good one hunting is where he plays super. The talented Mister Ripley. I mean, that counts, I guess. But I'm talking about Good Will Hunting. Yeah. Uh, like, how many smart guys? He's played more than he's played like at least a dozen. Uh, Jason Bourne. All right, man. All right. <laughs> like, do you want me? The list goes on. Matt Damon is always the smart guy. Yeah, he is a smart guy. Who else in this? Except for and uh, except for in Deadpool too. Oh, that's true. He was just sort of got a drunk guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Also on this movie, the one, the only, the younger, bu- uh, the younger brother, the the brother-in-law to Jennifer Lopez, Casey Affleck. I always believed it was the things you don't choose that makes you who you are. Your city, your neighborhood, your family. People here take pride in these things. Like it was something they'd accomplished. The bodies around their souls. The cities wrapped around those. From uh, Gone Baby Gone. Great movie. Gone Baby Gone. That's where a baby gets stolen yeah. and they sell it to Jeffrey Epstein. That's right. All right. <laughs> now, um... That's that movie, yeah. Uh, also in this movie, who also starred in Downsizing with Matt Damon, mm-hmm. where this clip is from, Hong Chow. <laughs> I ask you questions, you say me true, okay? Of course. Other than I, on both, what kind of fuck you give me? What? What kind of fuck you give me? What kind? I, I don't... American people ain't kind of fuck. Love fuck, hate fuck, sex only fuck, break up fuck, make up fuck, drunk fuck, buddy fuck, pity fuck. Okay, I, I have no idea where you heard that. Third host family. Okay, uh, that, that is just wrong. Okay, there's a whole spectrum of, of emotions and, and motivations. And don't say fuck, it's, it's vulgar. 
Say something else, like, you know, make love or, I don't know. So, what's love fuck? Yeah, from Downsizing, like you said. I can't believe I looked up her name and look, that was the easiest clip to fucking get. <laughs> like, I've looked up her name and that was the first clip that popped up. And I was like, how could I not use Yeah, the yeah, yeah, clip? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I agree. Like, I agree. You can't... Also in this movie, the one, the only one, one of the greatest big, big guys in all of acting world, world, um, Mr. Ron Perlyman. Perlyman? Just Perlman. I know it's Perlman. <laughs> Let me be real clear. Nobody threatens Sam Crow. And nobody tells us what we can and can't do. Black, brown, or white. So why don't you just climb back into your little German clown car and drive back to Nazi town? Because the next time you piss all over my shoes, it will kill you. Yeah, you're always going to pick something from, you know... From Sins of Anarchy, probably. Well, I was gonna do Hellboy, but all the Hellboy ones were like either really loud you, or you like probably, you could probably could have done Drive using that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I like that one because he tells that piece of shit Henry Rollins <laughs> off, um, and you know, anytime you could tell that piece of shit off. I saw him uh, live recently. I told you that, right? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, it's fun. Um, <laughs> he's, <great. laughs> he's, ama- he's amazing. Good man. <laughs> uh, hopefully, no, he's not. Are you kidding he's me? Never he's awesome. He's person. awesome. No, he's he. Oh my god, he treated he's treated more people like crap than I've known ever. It was great to see him live. He's awesome. He's nice to everyone there. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we'll agree to disagree yeah. that. So, well, Toby good. Jones. Now, the trick of it is, you stand there. I point a camera at you. I cut the shots together. And then the audience does the work in here. Do this. Do nothing. So, let's try scene 213. The camera holds her face. Action. It was several. Hitchcock. Okay. Oh, yeah. He is Hitchcock. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, (laughs) and also Bing Rams. Let me tell you what now. I'm going to call a couple of hard pipe-hitting niggas to go to work on the homes here with a pair of pliers and a blowtorch. You hear me talking, hillbilly boy? I ain't through with you by damn sight. I'm going to get medieval on your ass. If you guys know that's from, that's from Pulp Fiction. But if you don't know where that's from, where the fuck you've been in the past? The Pulp Fiction. Yeah, yeah. All right. And then some some of the people from the movie in Instigators. Now the movie, uh, the second movie we'll be doing this week is Cuckoo. Right. That's that's the bird, but I think you had to be meant to put the poster. Of Cuckoo. That's the bird. You, yeah. Cuckoo. Yeah, it's cuckoo. a cuckoo clock. Yeah, he goes cuckoo, cuckoo. There's some real fucked up shit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there we yeah go. all right. Uh, cuckoo uh, with the great hunter. Um, oh, is that Schaefer? Schaefer. 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 Hunter Schaefer. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Why don't you kiss me? Can I kiss you? No, why don't you, like, kiss, kiss me? Um, I mean, do you want me to, like, kiss, kiss you? I want you to want to kiss me so bad that you don't even ask. It's from uh, Euphoria, where Hunter Schaefer wants Zendaya to kiss, kiss me. (laughs) I mean... Who doesn't want Zendaya to kiss them? I mean, I'm fine without it, honestly. But, but you know, <laughs> I go without kiss kissing. You can kiss kiss by Zendaya. He wants to make out with Henry Rollins, but he doesn't want to no, make just... out with Zendaya. That, whatever. Whatever. Maybe. All right, moving on. Dan Stevens is in this movie as well. 
And I can't help but notice that those ladies over there are drinking cheap beer. That seems like a shame to me. I'd like to buy each one of them a blowjob shot. <laughs> are you serious? I am. Yes. Do you want to buy anything for their fellas? Do I look like I'd like to buy something for their fellas? Well, might be the polite thing to do. Sure, okay, fine. Let me get each one of those guys at Cosmopolitan. <laughs> Mister, I don't know what you're going for, but uh, I was thinking of beer. Nope. Blowjob shots for the ladies and a Cosmopolitan for each of the guys. You can keep the change on that. You got it? <laughs> yeah, from the guest. Great movie, great movie. Great movie, great movie. Uh, and also, um, Mila and Leah. But she doesn't speak in the movie, but here's, here's her talking now. <laughs> I'm Mila Lil and I play Tang. She's the youngest member of the gang. She's quite feisty. I don't want to be on lookout. But she's very good at stealing because maybe like she's the youngest and it's easiest for her to pick it. Someone's coming! Uh, just so you guys know, her character's mute in the movie so you won't see, hear any like, cuteness. But, um, yeah. but anyway... <laughs> It doesn't matter. We're <laughs> paying respect to the artists that are in the film, okay, Chris. Right. Who else in this? I forgot. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, Jessica uh, Hankwich. I started this program to teach you not just how to defend yourselves, but how to prepare for your futures. Today is Daryl's last day. He's been selected for an elite training program that comes with a full scholarship to a university. You're gonna miss me? No. Mostly. You deserve this. For your work ethic, your commitment to the code, and most importantly, honoring and protecting your fellow classmates. I forget where that's from. Is it from... Uh, I see you there, Neil. <laughs> and tell on television. That that that's from Iron Fist. Uh, okay, Iron Fist. Of course it is. Of course yes. it is. <laughs> Duh! It's Good. from one of the greatest Marvel shows of all time. Well, wasn't it considered not one of the greatest shows of all time for Marvel? Only for people that don't like comics. Okay, fine. All right. I have no idea. I have no idea. I I, I thought it was okay, but <laughs> I I can see why everybody bitched. But you we know, have one person who did you give me a one for. Yeah, who am I to judge anything? You know, like, like seriously. Yeah, you're just over there here with your arm. Yeah. What about Martin? Do you want to mention the last guy that we got in here? I see you now. I see you on TV. <laughs> we don't have anybody else. Yeah, we do. We have Martin Sokus. Let me apologize. Oh, Martin Sokus. Let me apologize. That. Let me apologize for my conduct. It was a long flight now, on short notice, and I I like to focus to. To work quickly, the deaths of Mr. Pushkin's men have interrupted his operations here. Imports, movements of goods have all ceased. That's unacceptable. I'm the one Mr. Pushkin calls in when people like you fuck up. Mm. I'm accountable now. Listen, pal, I don't like your You've tone with me. You've taken Mr. Pushkin's money for years. Money that comes with conditions, non-negotiable conditions. The problem you're having with me is you still think you matter. You don't. I am all that matters, and so we're clear. I'm not here to say, please. I'm here to tell you what to do. It's from uh, the Equalizer, where he's talking to David Harper. Yes, yes, the Equalizer. That was a good movie. Yeah. Uh, one of the best movies by Jim Carrey by far. <laughs> yeah, that one. No. I think I think we tend to watch him. Chris, tell everybody where they can find us. You can find us all on movies. Don't like that. That uh, movies on site that network w two m net dot com is w number two is in, is in movies net you'll find us there along with a bunch of other podcasts we're at X and TS podcast on Instagram at TS podcast we have Patreon Patreon costs us you don't suck uh, you can find us on bonfires which means don't suck it's something to do and you can find the shirts and a bunch of other you know is made at uh, T Public at Blackwood hyphen Productions you'll find it there along with a bunch of other stuff you know is made and uh, if you're watching you do subscribe if you watch us on Facebook like the page. Hey, wherever you find us, just subscribe and we'll, we'll be there waiting for you whenever it's ready. Uh, Neil, who are we talking about today? I don't know. Okay. Uh, I think we're talking two movies. Uh, but we're also talking about someone that I sent you, you said you were 
put together the, the promo for for what for Final Heaven. You never set it up. <laughs> set it up. <laughs> <laughs> hey Neil, what what sponsor are we talking That's about? I said, today? I said, I said oh, Neil. Okay. No, I know. I said. Oh, I said, I said, I said I, who are we talking about? Yeah. Who would? Okay. Uh, what sponsor are we talking about today? Who who would, who would give our love go. to? What small business are we giving yeah. love to? Fine. What people are we trying to promote? Fine. What people are we trying to help? You gotta set it up. You know who are we talking about today? Who's our friend? There we go. Now, now that we got through all that, um. I don't even remember what we were talking Final about. Heaven. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're talking about Chris's uh, favorite radio, favorite radio, favorite record store in the entire world, Vinyl Heaven at 94 West 87th Street. Now, Vinyl Heaven is a very small uh, mom pa owned shop. In fact, only one guy owns it, and his name's Steve. This is Steve. Do this and his dog. Puppy. Yeah. Yep, yep. And his puppy. Uh, there's Steve with the uh, Ghostbusters car. It, it's located right next to a mall. It's a strip mall in, on 87th Street. And that's how big it is, guys. That's the that's the size of the place. That's it. <laughs> it, it it's, a, it's very small. But. What those people? They have 100% some of the best taking care of records of all time. If you're looking for a good vinyl at a good price and don't want to dig through crate after crate of common lame records, this is the place to go. The owner, Jeff, is a knowledgeable, nice guy and doesn't bother with scratchy trash records. I love this place and will definitely go back, and that is a testimonial uh, just from last year. Uh, Vinyl Heaven is a neighborhood record store at 94111 West 87th Street, Overland Park. Uh, they are in the Lewisburg Square Shopping Center facing Grant next to Scooter's Coffee. Ew. Uh, <laughs> open 12 to 6, Monday through uh, Friday, 10 to 6 on Saturday, and noon to 5 on Sunday. They carry new and used vinyl LPs, 45, 78 CDs, record sleeves, and mailers. Buy, sell, and trade. You can call them at 913-499-7442. You can find them at www.vinylheavenkc.com. Or you can go to their Facebook, which is also uh, Vinyl Heaven KC. Now, coming up in just a couple weeks, on Sunday, September 8th, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., there'll be a $5 live show outside. Uh, there'll be CDs, musical member, billion DVDs, posters, and more. It'll be at the VFW at the 95550 Flum Road in Lenexa, Kansas. You can get the info for that, too, also at Vinyl Heaven KC or Vinyl Heaven KC on Facebook. Boom. You know, what, and what, that's the what, bottom line. What do you have a problem with against with uh, scooters? You know, their coffee. I, I don't like any coffee at all. All oh, coffee is, right. all coffee is nasty. You have to train your body to drink coffee. <laughs> like you, that's literally what you have to do. Those first couple well, of years you when you're drinking your coffee, just drink. you have to train train your body and make it train. Like literally, go read. There's science on this shit. I'm not making this up. You have to train your body to drink too. I no. I can tell you no, your body naturally wants water. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, like when you, I can tell you, I didn't like beer the first time I tried it. I like this beer now. I trained myself to like mm, beer. Man, I only put two in here, and I feel like I didn't put enough because, man, this is already feel like it's taking an hour and a half. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry, we're not fun. Are you having fun right now? You all right? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. I see. I see. All I see right, you on television. Right, right there. Right there. That's cool. Uh, oh, you want to see it again? I'll show it one more time. There I am. <laughs> where is that? At? Where, where was that? At? That was a uh, front row on SmackDown okay. this past Friday. You were looking. Like- I went there. I was all there. You there? I was standing. I was sitting next to the flag guy. Flag guy was cool. Love him. That was about the third or fourth time I sat next next to flag guy. Um, it was a great event. Um, then the next day, I had to work a Hozier concert, the same venue. It was a fun. And. Yeah, it was fun, but then like I pulled both of my legs from going up and down those stairs you get constantly you get in the fu- stuff. in the arena. Yeah, yeah, and like so, like for most of the week, man, I was sitting, I was laying on the couch with ice packs wrapped around my legs, trying to get my legs so I could actually walk on them again. I mean, you have another, you don't have concert in front of a couple of weeks, though, right? 
I don't know, whatever. Okay, I guess right. not. I guess, I'm pretty sure my job hates me now, but that's whatever. All right, let's get into a movie I can complain about a lot. <laughs> the Instigators. The Instigators. Uh, starring, uh, this is directed by Doug Lyman. Yeah, Doug Lyman, he's a famous movie uh, director. He's directed such things as Edge of Tomorrow, Fair Game, Swingers, The New Roadhouse. And uh, this is a... Uh, Stars Matt Damon as the character, sorry, as um, Matt Damon as Roy. Well, that's plenty wise. We know what we're holding and we know what you're holding. Uh, Keith Affleck is Kobe, or Kobe. I always believed it was the things you don't choose. Hong Chao is Dr. Donna Rivera. I asked you a question. Also, this also stars Jack Harlow as Scalvo. Jack Harlow. Michael Stolberg is Mr. Pisagi. Alfred Molina. As Rishi De Chico, uh, and uh, Ron Perlman as Mayor Maselli. Let me be real clear. Also stars Toby Jones as Attorney Alan Flynn. Now, the trick of it is, and Ving Rhames uh, plays a police commissioner. I forget his name right now. Let me tell you what, Nat. I'm going to call a couple of hard pipe-hitting niggas to go to work on the homes here with a pair of pliers and a blowtorch. You hear me you talking, hillbilly boy? Oh, yeah, sorry. And then, you, know, you, got, yeah. you, didn't, you didn't even play a full sentence for half the other guys. It's just such a good you play that whole thing. It's just such a good line. It's just such a good part of that movie. Dude. All right, Neil, you got a, you got a storyline for this one? I'm taking away your... Taking your producer license away. <laughs> All right. Um, follows two robbers who must go on the run with the help of one of their therapists after a theft doesn't go as planned. Yeah, that's. I guess that's that's it. That's just the whole storyline. Um, when you uh, so uh, I I like Chris. Yeah, Chris. Yes. Did you know the pooping is the reward for training your body? What is? The pooping is your reward for training your body. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, is it really a reward, though? <laughs> Somebody put that up. <laughs> is that really a reward, though? That's one more that's, that's an award for you. Dude, you, you never poop on trips, so you need to I you poop need on trips. I definitely poop on trips. I poop on trips. No, you never poop I on trips. I remember I had a girlfriend got real, real mad because it's like, we have to go now. It's a fucking emergency. She thought it was disgusting. But, um, uh, Neil... What did you think of of the instigators? Um, Matt Damon was in it. So was Casey. Uh, Ron Perlman was in it. Yeah, okay. So, um, uh, uh, Alfred Milano. Oh, oh. Doctor Octopus was yeah, in yeah. it. Um, uh, Natalie Carter was in it. Uh, Rob Kanowski. Oh, Cronk. I know. So, sir. Did you like it? Was in it? I'm asking you. This is what we're getting at. Uh, man, what's the best way to say this about this movie? I was, um, I was thinking I did like if you're thinking about it. I like the rapport between Roy and Cobby, but that's about it. <laughs> like, like, this is a DVD my dad would have been really happy that he bought. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you understand that? Yeah, yeah. This is, this, was, this is a dad movie. This is like, uh, Oh, I'm going to sit back and watch Casey Affleck. And kind of fall and asleep. Damon. Kind of fall yeah, asleep. Yeah, you fall asleep. You wake up and you're like, did I miss anything? Oh, they're still kind of doing the same thing. Not really. All right, cool. Uh, it was funny. It had its moments. Um, I felt like something was missing. Uh, maybe the action. Like. <laughs> maybe the action. Because there's not a whole lot. I mean, it's very uh, subdued. You know, like. Yeah, like, like like this felt like a road trip movie, and they tried to cream an action movie there. Didn't quite work. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I I really I was like, there's scenes in this movie where it's just kind of like, okay, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, thank you, sir. May I please have another? Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of that. Uh, there was just them chilling. A bunch of in the waiting, and by any means, okay. Uh, this movie, like the the the, the, the dynamic between Casey and Matt, were great. Yeah, that, that was good. Ron Perlman as a bad guy uh, is always great. Yeah. Let's not be and Toby, but it's like 
it needed more. It needed something else. It needed, I think the, I think the dial was at like six mm-hmm. and the dial needed to be set at like eight or nine. Yeah, I'm with you, man. It's- and this could have been a smash movie out of the park. But- this could have been like, oh, oh, this is awesome. Okay. This could have been like, um, like for the, for the the action part of this, there wasn't a whole lot of it, you know. Like yeah, and, and it, it's just like I was thinking this was gonna feel like Ocean's Eleven or like Italian not Job. Even close that to, uh, not even close to that. Cover. No, it, 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 instead of feeling like Top Gun, it felt like Iron Eagle. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, Is yeah. that a good reference? Yeah, Does, do people get that one? I guess it's a little old. That's staging me. Okay, um, you're thinking you're gonna get uh, Michael Keaton as Batman, but instead you get you get Christian Bale. You know, like it's Probably literally disappointing <laughs> on so many fronts. But, but, yeah. Okay. So, like, you you kind of want this to be a buddy comedy, but you don't really get that. You don't get because because buddy comedies also have a like, pretty strong plot, and this one is just sort of like, oh, they're running, and they don't really know who they're running from, and then they don't get caught, then they do get caught. Like, like I don't know, man. It's like you said, it's a really good DVD movie to fall asleep through on a Sunday. But it's not like yeah, that's what this is. I, I mean, by any means, I love Matt Damon's, I love Cassie Affleck. Like, everybody in this damn movie, I like. Um, you know, I I, I like Alfred uh, Alfred um, Molino. Mm-hmm. I love Vin. I hate. I love Ron. I love Toby. All these actors are great. But for having that much fucking talent in a movie, I I, I needed to feel something, and I I felt nothing. Like, it, this was, is just it was it like, was fun, like the parts of the lots of humor, but it just it just doesn't just you know it's fucking, it didn't do anything. It, it felt like it was like it felt like they had the same problems at the end of the movie that they did at the beginning of the yeah, movie. Yeah, for real, <laughs> for real. <laughs> like like it didn't feel like it, it went anywhere and accomplished a goal. It's just kind of like all right, here's a day with these guys. I mean, I did right. I did like hearing Casey Affleck in his native accent. You know what I mean? That was cool. Hearing him just be Boston, you know? And he, you know, and yeah, that, nah. that was cool. I mean, two Boston guys being in Boston, doing Boston things. Um, I liked it. They were they were fun. It was good. But again, it didn't overexcite. It didn't make me go, man, this is a movie I got to tell somebody about. Yeah, like, I, I, I had a, I was struggling this morning. What two movies are we talking about today? I was struggling a little bit yeah. <laughs> because um, this this would have been this would have been a movie that if I wasn't doing it for the podcast, somebody at, at a house or something would put it on and be like, "Yeah, I want to watch this movie, Instigators," and I'll be like, "All right." <laughs> and then, like ten minutes into the movie, I'd finally realize I've seen this movie, oh, yeah. <laughs> but it'd take like a good ten to fifteen minutes for me to realize that I saw this movie before. Yeah. I mean, I like Casey Affleck. I like Matt Damon. And Casey Affleck... I like Doug Lyman. Doug Lyman's films yeah, are usually superb. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But uh, we didn't get that. So, it's... I don't... I, some, some missed the mark here. And maybe it's because Casey was there and it wasn't Ben. Well, I mean, I like Casey a lot, but he also beats women, apparently. So, like, <laughs> I don't know. But, but, but... You don't hear when you say Affleck and Damon, you don't mean Cat Casey Affleck, right? You mean Ben Affleck, yeah. You do. I think if Ben Affleck was a part of this, maybe it'd have brought a different energy to it, yeah. And maybe the movie would have been different, but I don't know. Something about the energy of this film just was kind of like I don't think I care. There wasn't like, a whole lot. It wasn't so a whole hard. lot. It was very energetic, man. That's what. I'm, yeah. Uh, and I, and I hate, like, just putting it down in the dumps, but it, it, was, it was a decent movie, I'm not going to lie. And, it, you know, there's a couple times I snickered. There's uh, there's a Ron Perlman, Toby scene. Toby was great yeah. as a little scanizing little... Sniveling a little... Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it, just, it just felt like there was some lackluster about this film that just made me just go, all right, I saw that. Cool. Like for example, like, it's like I, usually when I get done watching one of the movies for this podcast, the first thing I do is end up in this seat right here, working on it, getting all the stuff, and I didn't even care about it. I, I was like, I'll do that tomorrow. It's one of those movies that if shit. you're if you're watching it and you have to go, you get back home and you don't put it back on. <laughs> you know, like like if I didn't do it for the podcast, but like, oh, 
I don't, I'm good. I don't need the rest of this movie. Um, it's, no, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, so, like, I, you know, again, there's there's chemistry between uh, Damon and Affleck, but Matt Damon, and Casey Affleck, I should say, and um, but but again, it's not enough to carry the movie. It's long, you know. Just it's sort no. of and, I, I don't think it did. I and there's so many special feature people in this be, in this movie or cameos or whatever you want to call them or short small parts. Of, of, Perlman. To that, that were and, all good. Like even Ving Rhames' character was cool. Yeah. being the badass that drives a tank around town. Yeah, but something just didn't work out to make this like I felt like this wanted to be like the gentleman, or this wanted to be like you know uh, one of those fun. Yeah, it's not cl- like, it's not clever like like a um like a Guy Ritchie movie. Like, like you were saying, the gentleman. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, that's yeah. a really good movie. That's a really good movie. And no one gives enough credit, I feel like. Um, this didn't have that. Also, Guy Ritchie tends to have really snappy dialogue. This had some of that. But, I, I mean, the, these... The di- yeah, the dialogue was kind of flat on these, some parts. These actors could do much, so much more than what they're doing with. So, uh, this is the instigators. I don't... I, I mean, Give us a rating. Huh? Oh, yeah. Give us a rating. 3.5, 3. 3.4. Wow. Maybe 3.3. Okay. 3. 3. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, 3.2. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go lower than whatever, whatever number you say, I'm going to go one lower. Okay. 1.9. I'm joking. <laughs> 1.8. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> this movie, I, I wanted to care. I wanted to care so much about this movie because everybody in it is just an actor. I just, Absolutely love and respect, but yeah. there is there's like no part in this movie where I was. I mean, I think Ron Perlman and Toby were the only scenes that I like really was in. I was into it, yeah. Like the rest of it, I was just like, I don't even know why I'm here, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like we, we when what Apple TV needs to do, Apple Plus, if they really want us to give a, like, a fuck about the movie, is they should make it good. They should have good movies with that. They haven't done that yet. Even that movie with the uh, no, no, they haven't. Even that movie with what's his face, um, as Spider Man. You're on my face. Do you want to be on my face? Let's do it. Um, but yeah, that's that's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. We get skaters. Really so, All right. I'm gonna run to his dot Neil. What's the audience score for mm-hmm. the skaters? Forty-one percent. Sixty percent. Sixty. How did it get sixty? <laughs> All, right. All right. What's the critic score for? The instigators, uh, thirty percent, forty-one. Oh damn it! <laughs> Quick consensus is. If I would have said forty-one <laughs> twice, I would have got Quick it. Quick consensus is, the alchemy of Casey Affleck and Matt Damon's knuckled rapport proves some charm, but this lead-back caper unravels due to the lack of entry and pulse. Kind of the fucking shit we said about it. Um, I'll read you a, a good review and a bad review. This is from a. Uh, this is from John Serbo. Decider. He says, "Final tally: fifty-one percent funny, forty-nine percent total freaking mess." So he liked him more. Uh, and this is uh, from Quiz Quiz Roster, the Sunday Independent in Ireland. He says, "Nice performances and all, but the instigator is a bit too loose, a bit too casual, and the surprisingly ineffective comedy whose emphasis is making things up as it goes along." That's a pretty, uh, pretty astute observation there, Chris. Um, so yeah, this is Instagram. You can find find that Apple Plus. Did TV. you just thank yourself for a good no, observation? No, this guy's name was Chris Wasser. The, the draft. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. It did something. I was saying, good job, Chris. Talking to myself, which I never do. Um, but um, you talk to yourself all the time. I do not, man. I, I mutter to myself all. I've the time. seen you do it, especially when you're in the bathroom. You're like, oh, that's a good boy. If you do the little <laughs> like get you a treat. It makes you pee. Uh, but um. So, <laughs> So you guys can watch uh, The Inscares and Apple TV, I guess, if you want to. There's other things to watch <laughs> besides this movie. <laughs> I'm sure it's on DVD somewhere, yeah. too, if you want to yeah. buy it. All right. Neil, uh, are, you, are you good for news? Are you ready to want to do news? Yeah, let's go, bro. Let's do some news. This is the Movies That Don't Suck and some of them news. I'm going to read stuff to Chris. He's going to like it. Or I'm going to drive to Kansas City and smack him in the tape. If we come down Saturday, I'm seeing Romulus. 
You know, I'm just, I think you're, 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 you're so inside, aren't you? Oh, dude, 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 dude. So they got a, uh, somebody tell you about this. They got a popcorn bucket for Romulus. Um, it's coming out here. One second. I, I forgot to upload the photos. Just give me two seconds. Um, but, um, I, I got a photo of it and you know what they did with Dune. Yeah. Yeah. Do and just, you know what they did with Deadpool, get Wolverine, this one too? Get this one. make it fun. I can fuck this Yeah, one. so this one, <laughs> this one, they just went straight for it. This is the, this is the new, that's the butter delivering machine. Uh, okay. You can see the pump <laughs> on the side. All right. Uh, yeah, that's I don't want to get to this good shit. But anyway, Disney wrongful death lawsuit is, they're trying to dis- get it dismissed because of the De- Disney Plus subscription. What's wrong? Disney is seeking a dismissal in a wrongful death lawsuit based on Disney Plus subscriptions terms of use. The company argues the terms of use require settle, settling any lawsuits out of court, including that of Jeffrey Piccolo after his wife, Kinko Porn Tangzin, died after eating food she was allergic to at Disney Springs. Piccolo alleges negligence by Disney for his wife's death due to food allergies at Raglan Road. While the company wants to dismiss it due that they are Disney Plus subscribers. That's insane. And in the in the in the terms in the terms of use, it says you cannot sue Disney. Aren't they kind of evil? Like like aren't they kind of like they put out such good shit? At this fucking point, <laughs> like 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 they put out such good shit like. Like, well, yeah, I'm excited for movies they're putting out, but then they do pull shit like this. I'm like, God, they're like the fucking Antichrist. You know what I mean? Like, like at, at this point, man, I have no idea what these guys are thinking, but they need, I, I, I mean, they need to come to Jesus moment. Man. I guess so, man. I, I, you know, yeah, I'll they, say need, so they need Ben Affleck and Matt Damon from Dogma to visit this. Yeah, I don't see like, this a lot, but, but you know, maybe they need Jesus. You know? Maybe they need Jesus. <laughs> I, don't, I don't take it lightly, but maybe they do. <laughs> All right, uh, in development is one of the greatest singers of all times. Biopic Boy George, uh, this will be uh, is in development with the singer as an executive producer. The film will focus on the Culture Club's height of fame and Boy George's personal struggles. Adapted from Boy George's autobiographies, the biopic will animate exploration of his life and career. Doesn't he need to die first before they show show they show this? I mean. I don't know. How many people got to... Uh, do you have to die before you get a good music pic, biopic? Elton John has a great biopic, and he's guess, not dead. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, I guess I didn't do one part of it, but, like, like Boy George, he's got some weird shit going on with him. There's still stuff, like, I'm sure he's got shit buried in his closet. We got no clue about, like, you know, bodies and all that shit, but we'll see what happens. Oh, yeah. Juan King Phoenix is still an asshole. Hollywood <laughs> outrage against him right now. After dropping out of a movie three days before they start filming, three days before they start filming, Juan King Felix dropped off, which he is an executive producer on. So, it's a, well, I'd like to know why did like did his family die? <laughs> like, like what's going? No, on? No, he just didn't want to play a gay man. Huh, that's strange. That that's what what, what I'm seeing. Uh, Wong King's last-minute departure from the major film may result in a la- legal action and a negative impact on his career. <laughs> yeah, well, the new Joker movie is going to do that. Uh, <laughs> it was announced that Phoenix yeah. had dropped out of the upcoming Todd Haynes, Tom Haynes film only oh, five days before principal photography was to begin. We Todd Haynes? Man, I like Todd Haynes. I'd like to see that. Oh, man. I mean, he's already played... You know, like this, like second shittiest version of the Joker, and now he's that, like you know. Didn't we? Say, didn't you say that you like that Joker movie? Yeah, I just don't like it in a comic book setting whatsoever. Okay, all right. Well, I mean, we'll see what happens with. Whatever. I like that character of Joker. I don't declare that Joker to be anything with any comic book ever in history. That's fair. I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Anthony, talking about a good person, Anthony Bourdain uh, is getting a biopic in the works from from A24. What? 
<laughs> I want to see that. Yeah, with with the holdovers breakout set to star. So the biopic is in the words. It's titled Tony and it is set to star uh, Dominic Sessa. Oh, uh, Bor- uh, Dominic Bor- uh or Bordine's early, I'm sorry, Bordine's early career in kitchens and media success will be covered in the fake. The biopic may struggle his struggles with substance abuse, but focus largely on his cultural legacy and not that, you know, he killed himself. Yeah. yeah. Rest in peace. So that, that's cool. I'm happy with that. Mm-hmm. I like things like that. I don't want to say um, So guess what it went on this past weekend, Chris? Did you, did you know what happened? No, tell me. I was sleeping. Oh, wait a minute. We'll talk about that in the next story. Okay. First, James Wan. Oh, James yeah. Wan is to direct the remake of one of the classic Universal Monsters. Do you know what monster James Wan gets? Is it Creature from the Black Lagoon? It is yeah, the okay, Creature okay. from the Black okay. Lagoon. Yeah, I'll see James Wan do that. And, uh... He's like, it's gonna be difficult because of the novelty of its 1954 original. Um... One, of course, being the, the success he's had in horror movies is one of the perfect picks to try to make this. I mean, come on. Yeah, he's good. He's right? good. Yeah. I, would, I'd, I'd definitely see what he'd make with, with Creature of the Back of the Man. Make it creepy. He says uh, he's going to kind of steal from a, a movie that already had the creature from Black Lagoon in it a couple years ago. What's it called? Shape of Water. Oh. <laughs> um, she fucked right. a fish um, in I'm trying to I'm trying to get to the because okay, this is the problem. Mm-hmm. There's a thing that happened this past week, and I'm trying to get the the stories that they, they were all over the place. So I'm trying to get the stories of all of them right now, so we can all know what's going on in the world today because people fighting, feuding, looting. It's okay. Uh, first announcement at Disney 23 Expo that went on this past weekend. Um, there, uh, Toy Story 5 is in the work and it is going to, um, basically it's going to base on that kids don't play with toys anymore. They play with electronical screens. So that is what that story is going to be based around. Cool. I mean, like, all right. Sure. Hey, are you thinking about going to Disney World anytime or Disneyland anytime soon? Well, just wait a year or two because in California, they're going to jo- add an island, and the island is going to be called Avatar California Adventure Plans, including the new Avatar's which are going to be called Fire and Ash. So now we know that the next Avatar fire. is about Fire and Ash, and we're getting in a nice little amusement park over there. Who it. gives a shit? Like, 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 who's super excited about the Avatar? Uh, the, the 11 people watching? Maybe? Okay, all right. Yeah, if you guys really love Avatar. Everybody lives in a basement, Chris. We both you and I talked shit about the last time Avatar movie. <laughs> anyway, uh, John Fairfo, Fairfo, Favre, Favre, John Favreau, Favreau, John Favreau. You know him from you know Swingers, you know the happy. Marvel movies. He's happy. happy. Um, he says that the next. Uh, Star Wars movie, because he's in charge of the Star Wars universe, if you didn't know, um, is going to be a rewarding experience for all the fans of The Mandalorian and Star Wars in the upcoming movie. He says he's putting together some of the beloved characters and bringing some of the characters uh, that people have thought about that should be in movies might be in these films. Cool. I mean, until it happens, we're just going to be sort of sitting on the sidelines hoping he doesn't fuck it up even more, you know? Man, you just gotta be mean all the time, don't you? you yeah, just... Of course, man. Of course, that's how we do it. Why, why do you? Why do you just? Why do you just want to stab people, Chris? It's I just so mean. People. You shouldn't stab people. Stabbing <laughs> people is not cool, bro. You always want to just stab them right in the gut. You want to like turn around. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> another movie that's coming out. We can all 
be happy about is Lilo and Stitch, the live movie. And there's the live version of Lilo. Cute. Or is that Stitch? That's Stitch. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Lilo's the girl. Stitch is the, is the animal. That, Lilo's the girl. I am so sorry. Um, also, we got the name of Freaky Friday 2 with Lindsay, Lo- Lindsay Lohan and Jamie Lee Curtis, which is one of the movies we'll be watching when it comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's called Freakier Friday. Okay. All right. Yeah. That makes sense. Of course, they do that. I mean, did you like the first Freaky Friday with Lindsay Lohan and Jamie Lee Curtis? Did you like that one? I mean, they're cute movies, man. I I'm not, you Julie know, is looking, who am I to judge either way on those? She was shredding because she was actually playing the guitar in that. And I was like, the, super impressed with it. So. Were you impressed of it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Are you sure? And he was trying to stall time until his next <laughs> thing loads back up. Uh, Tron Aries, uh, people got to see footage of that this weekend at the Disney Expo, and people, and they're getting a good response to it, so that's good. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, people saw Snow White, I don't know if I'm even going to touch that story, never mind, I'm just going to move on. Yeah. Snow White's <laughs> out there, it's going to be a live action movie, we will not be, we will not be covering that film. Um, all right. Uh, you got to see people got to see Harrison Ford turn into to the Red Hulk, which we have no clip footage for. But here's the two big announcements that nobody knew. Uh, Zootopia is getting a sequel I'm done that with they're that. working on, I'm done and that. added added to the cast is the one and only Short Round himself, Ki Hu Kwan. Okay, nice. Ki Hu Kwan. We'll be joining the cast. For some reason, I thought you were going to so say Andy cool. Dick, and I was like, what? I don't know in my head. I thought you were going to say Andy Dick. I was Andy like, Dick? I don't even know if he's still alive. Yeah, I don't Is know Is Andy Dick still yeah, alive? Or did he die? He might as well have. Oh, died. Dude, man. <laughs> I still love that song he did. It's just another great day for our drugs, so let's go outside. People think that he's anyway, being, um, being you know, responsible for Phil Hartman's wife's death. Yeah. I... I, whatever. I'm not even going to go down any of those <laughs> things. I wasn't there. I'm not there. I'm not a person that can do that. And now here's the biggest announcement from Disney Expo 3 or, or Disney Expo 23. The Incredibles Part 3 is in the works, confirmed. And that the uh, great Brad Bird is going to be the original director, will be directing that version of. The Incredible. Yeah, I saw this, and that's the only thing I couldn't avoid. They just showed up as a notification on my phone. People were excited about Incredibles three. Nice. People were excited about the Incredibles well, You know, the Incredibles two. I was like, whatever. That's fine. Um, Crawl two mm-hmm. is in the works. So me and you will be love. We'll love to see that movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. The, the Accountant, Ben Affleck's movie The Accountant has got the green light, and it's in pre-production right now. The Accountant 2 will hit theaters on April 25th, 2025, with a stellar cast and the same director from the original movie. I love Yeah, I finally watched that. The I, original I, I finally watched The Accountant with, the, with him and, um, and Anna Kendrick. So. Yes. I love that movie, so I can't wait for that to go on. Um, so... Paramount Studios TV division has completely shut down. What? They are using oh, yeah, it as yeah, a yeah. loss, as a task break for budget cuts. So shows like Jack Reacher, oh, not Jack Reacher, but uh, uh, what's the one with uh, Jim from The Office? Uh, Shadow Agent, I don't know. It's something with Jack, something, not, not Jack Reacher, but oh, Jack, Jack Ryan. Reacher, Jack. Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan's going to get canceled. I they movie, don't find I heard someone. The movie, I, heard, I heard the movie to CBS. That's what I heard. Some of them, they're moving to CBS. So uh, it just matters. They know uh, Jack Reacher is, for one, moving to uh, CBS. Well, Reacher's from Amazon. But you're right. They make it for, they make it for uh, yeah. So what about, like, that Jamie Renner's the movie that's just shows on there? This is going away? Mayor of Kingtown or whatever, all that stuff. Which one's that? They have one with Jeremy Renner. They have like a f- one with like 
aside, they have a, they have a bunch of shows that they're like we really want you to watch, but I'm not gonna. I'm not going to bother with it. Yet. I don't know. It, the thing is, is like, so I'm guessing, I'm guessing that uh, the good old, like all the Star Trek has to be under something else because they didn't even mention Star Trek. And that is like the big thing from Paramount. Hey, everyone's like, yeah, it's like Picard, anytime I go to Paramount, that's yeah. yeah. Picard will. And uh, what's the other one? Um, Voyager. <laughs> like, you know, uh, uh, Lower Decks, um, you know, uh, Strange New Days. Discovery yeah. is now done. Oh, that's, that's over. Okay. Voyager. I was joking. A Voyager. <laughs> but, yeah, man. So, last but not least, I'm getting it set up. That, that's what's taking so long, and I'm sorry that I'm kind of stretching things out because Chris hates that because yes. then he has to edit, and then he doesn't like editing, and then he cusses me out, yeah. and then he's uh, then he cusses my mom out, then I he sent, beats up my mom. I sent it's pictures, weird. I sent pictures of my asshole in time, so he didn't expect it. Oh, yeah, what is that, you know? <laughs> what, what are you doing, bro? What yeah, are you exactly, talking about? Exactly, exactly. That's just nasty, dude. Uh... That's, I don't even know, like, I don't, I don't, why, why are you weird like that, bro? Man. I won't say it again. I won't why, stop. why are you weird? I'll stop telling people. Why, why do you got to talk about my mama like that? Like, I know where you live. I know where your cousin lives. I don't even say anything about your mama, so. All right. You say a lot about my mama uh, all the time. Like, that either. one time you asked for her phone I'm number, I'm, and I've, I've, I've never, never heard met it her. ever since. Not once I gave you her phone number. Just not call once her up, bro. <laughs> All right, so last but not least, this is the most exciting news of the entire week right here. Mm -hmm. Amazon, MGM, and Studios, Mattel, have announced they only they not only got their He-Man, but they have their Tila as well. He-Man will be played by Nicholas Gadalizzi. How hot he is. He's a very good-looking man. Tila will be played by Camilla Mendez. Ooh, a very also a very good looking woman. The, these are the two characters they are playing. <laughs> Let's go through that again. That's He Man. That's Tila. And that's what they. All right, cool. We, we haven't seen them in the Switch Eight character yet, so we can't really d- judge them. You know, like, whatever. <laughs> Neil doesn't like it. He doesn't like this TV Wilson. I'm just saying, if they don't look like freaking Chris Hemsworth without a shirt off, man, I don't know if I can take him serious as he Can we talk about how Chris Hemsworth is in Bad Times at Royale? That's just like a random thing. You pulled it out. Sorry, like, we just, just a, lost two viewers on that sorry, one, bro. Man. Like they're just like, what is he talking? Oh my god, what happened? And then Chris is like getting out the oil, just, like rubbing all over himself. But me, himself, but and me, he's me like, you. Oh my god, me, let's talk about me, Chris Hansworth. But me, oh, but me and you were talking. Yes. Me and you talked about questioning our heterosexuality while watching that movie. <laughs> right. I'm uh, fine. All right, let's move on. That is All right. news. Anyway, that's the end of the news, buddy. <laughs> Let's get her done. That was the MTTS Podcast News. I read stuff to Chris. He better like it because I ain't reading no more. All right. Um, let's talk about the, the movie that we saw in theaters this week. This is Cuckoo, directed by uh, God, this guy's name is um, Tillman Singer. He's directed. Uh-huh. He's not really directed much American films. He's done a bunch of German stuff. Uh, Elfin Del Mundo, The Invincible, is Alpine Residence, and Agus, and now uh, Cuckoo. The, this is directed. This is starring Hunter Schaefer as the as Gretchen. Can I ask you a question? Uh, Jan Blunhart as Henry. Martin Soksus as Luis. Let me apologize for my conduct. Uh, Jessica Henwick is Beth. I started this program to teach you not just how to defend yourselves. Dan Stevens as Herr Koenig. 
And I can't help but notice that those ladies over there are drinking cheap beer. That seems like a shame to me. I'd like to buy each one of them a blowjob shot. Uh, this also stars Mila Liu. I'm Mila Liu, and I play Tang. And this also stars Greg Fernandez as Trixie. Prochette Mondiani is Dr. Bonomo. Uh, Astrid Burgess Frisbee is Ed. And uh, Colleen Morrow is... Well, the, the, the Conrad singer is Eric. You know, what's her in the storyline for Cuckoo? Cuckoo. Reluctantly, 17-year-old Gretchen leaves her American home to leave with her father, who has just moved into a resort in the German Alps with his new family. Arriving at their future residence, they are greeted by Mr. King, her father's boss, who takes an exceptional interest in Gretchen's mute half-sister, Alma. Something doesn't seem right in this trivial vacation paradise. Gretchen is pledged by strange noises and bloody visions until she discovers a shocking secret that only concerns her own family. So the first half of this movie... You're trying to figure out what the f- fuck is going on. And then the like the third act, it, it sort of feeds, it just feeds you all this information. Uh, I saw to say, I didn't like this movie, because I did like this movie. The thing I think I like most about this movie is the creativity. You don't see fucking shit like this ever. Ever. But I, I wouldn't know if I'd call wait, it. Wait, wait, what? Creativity, okay. What? what? You think it's creative? I mean, I guess... I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. Like, okay, so continue with your thought because I think I'm probably gonna obliterate it. But go ahead, obliterate whatever. Uh, th- this is not a horror film. Th- th- this is marked as a horror film. Not really scary at all, at all, really. I guess there's some monster in it. I guess, but um, but uh, I. I found Hunter's character kind of unlikable most of the time. Um, not to say that uh, I didn't like this movie because I did like this movie. It was just fucking weird. It's a weird fucking movie. Like that, that, that's, I think. I, I don't think it's that weird. You don't think so? Someone, someone's in a strange place. Strange noises are happening. Strange things are happening. You find out that it's super fucked up. Strange things <laughs> happening. This is but, about but, the most okay. common fucking horror movie you can fucking throw down in your entire fucking life, bro. No, it's not common. Like, I, I, okay, uh, unsane. Uh, let me let me just go through them all. How many fucking movies are exactly like this? Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two. That's like saying uh, every horror movie is the same. It's not like the the, the whole. The whole th- idea behind it is interesting, but but mm. but but I want to say something. So the, Neon put out two movies this year, two horror films. They put out Long Legs and this, and Long Legs is much more accessible than Cuckoo, much more, by a long shot. I don't know. I think this one was better. Is it better than Long Legs? Yeah, Long Legs was kind of predictable. This one actually, you know, made you think. I I, I mean, I really love Long Legs, so I wouldn't call it predictable. And I, and I don't. It I don't, was very predictable. It's so predictable that me even saying that that it's predictable pretty is really cuckoo. <laughs> I, I know you just said that. Just ah, so you- <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Okay. This is a this is a common horror movie, but it's got monsters. There's there's monsters in the background. There's monsters that come to face you. There's monsters, monsters, horror. Oh, science, science with the monsters, monsters, monsters. Oh, there's more monsters with the science and the, and the, and the monsters but, but, and the but, science. But, uh, oh, look, there's science and there's monsters. But, but I do want to mention that, that I think every German person in this sounded like Christoph Waltz. <laughs> like Dan Stevens. I'm like, I was like, I want to see Christoph Waltz in that role. Uh, but I do want to say that I liked Hunter's like acting, Hunter and Dan Stevens, fantastic. Hunter and Dan Stevens is why this movie exists. Yeah, it's good. And it's they're good in it. Period. The rest of the movie does not matter. The rest of the people don't matter. Nobody else in this movie matters. They they all just need to quit their jobs, move to, I, I don't know. Anyway, it's your mouse. Uh, but, <laughs> but the, yeah, but this movie, um. It was all about Hunter and Dan Stevens and their interactions. Yeah. Knocked it out of the park. Um, I see Henry did the, it. Um, the whole weird thing about this is that 
I'm, I'm going to guess this is PG-13. No, it's rated R. Oh, it's rated R? Yep. Because they didn't show you a thing they should have showed you. Like, I feel like there's a certain thing they should have gave you the full perspective on. Are you talking about, what are you talking about? And they didn't. What are, what are you doing? What are you saying? What are you talking I, about? I can't say it because they'll be ruining the movie and it's called it. We don't spoil stuff. Okay. But there's a certain scene. There's certain scenes. There's certain things that the monsters do that we never get to see. Oh, you want to see that? Uh, could they show that though? I mean, I thought it'd be cool because that would definitely make the movie I guess like, there's more a, epic. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say anything about not anything, but there's a scene in, um, in that last Exorcist movie. Or exercise, yeah, movie. and that part freaked me the fuck out. But um, that's <laughs> what I want, bro. That's where we're at in this world. Like, we uh, don't need none of your, we don't need none of your light ass fucking horror movie shit. Uh, okay. We need it to come. I've seen, I've seen Saw like a hundred times. Uh, uh, I've seen freaking Hostel uh, like a billion times. Also, the, uh, we're at that level, bro. Yeah, but, but, if you're uh, at R and you got a gross thing like the thing that is supposed to be. Uh, hinted at, and the thing that they talk about in this fucking movie. Let's go. I, you have the R rated already. I don't, I don't know if you can do sh- it. I don't know if you can show the thing that showed the first Omen. That that was that was horrifying. <laughs> but um, but anyway, uh, but I, I I don't think they need to show that. But again, Neil thinks it should have been. Uh, more, more fucked up. But, I think it should have been a little. If it got some gore in there and they got some more fucky, fucky, like fucked up stuff, a little bit more, I believe this movie could have been a fucking classic. Um, because that stuff wasn't in it, I believe that's why this movie didn't work so well. Neither one. Both the problem with both the movies that we watched this weekend is that both of them are. Eh. You think they played it safe? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think both movies played it way I, too safe. I don't. The first one, some kind of energy is missing. This, I they had the R rating already. Just go for the shit, bro. Stop, stop trying to hide behind the door and be like, oh, we don't I, need this or that. I thought this, no, go for it. This, I, thought, I thought this thing was kind of fucking crazy, inventive. Even uh, I thought it. Like yeah, you say, at, at, at this point, I rather went, I wish we would have watched Borderlands. No, you're not. You're not saying that. Yeah, yeah, like I'm like, man. You know, okay, I wanted this to be better. Oh, Neil, you would have definitely I, wanted I Borderlands watched, to be better. I could have just watched Borderlands and been the same way because that movie I just wanted to be better too. Like, you know, it's like <laughs> no, Neil. I, I like this movie quite a bit. I I've cooled down a bit after seeing it Monday, but I liked uh, Cuckoo quite a bit. Uh, it was good. It was it was weird and it was it was Hunter and Dan Stevens that made this whole movie. I'm sorry, like uh, him being the kooky weirdo scientist German guy and her being the the teenager trying to figure out life and if she can play bass in a good punk band. <laughs> um, I mean nobody nobody likes bass players from punk bands, dude. But um, Fat Mike is the bass player for NoFX. What Fat Mike is the bass player for NoFX. Fat Mike, Louis. yeah. Yeah, dude, the bunch, like it's kind of you know, a bunch of bunch of punk players, the, the bands, and the play bass anyway. But it doesn't matter because all punk punk player bass players do. Bow 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 bow. You know, bow, bow. I don't think have you ever played bass. Like fucking fucking no, I don't think so. <laughs> That's all they do. Do you want me to pull up Sid Vicious tapes? Sid Vicious sucks, man. He's he's an awful. They, they, that, he sucks. <laughs> he was man. a bass player. Uh, he was terrible. But um. And the, but anyway, anyway, back to back to the that back to the story at hand. Uh, this movie was decent. It will give you a couple good jump scares. It has some uh, a little bit of gore in it and stuff like that. It's also. Um, the, I I think you're not gonna fucking. The last act is really what brings it together. It's, it's fucking crazy. The last yeah, act. the last act brings it together. The beginning of the movie, some of it goes so slow, it's like pulling teeth from your mouth, and like uh, some parts of it just it didn't pay off for the slowness you had to be in. Mm, I would disagree. I, I would. Well, that's your disagreement on that. I because I, 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 it was like, oh, okay, I guess we're going really slow for no reason <laughs> at all. I just. I, I do agree with this one, but I, I think this movie is better than what you're getting credit for. It was better than the Scares, and that I think it was. I really like this movie. I think Neon did a great job with this and 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 fucking uh, 
It'll all be spent the same year. Yeah, uh, because of this, I don't think I'll ever want to see another neon movie. That's fine. Whatever. Yeah, no more neon movies on this podcast. You're you joking? What the fuck? Like, I, I, at the end of the year, you didn't put this on like just because I chose it? <laughs> Are you going to talk shit on it? I'm just saying that everything I said today, Chris, it's just cuckoo. Mm-hmm. It's just cuckoo. Anyway, um, yeah, the movie was okay. It was decent. It was whatever. It wasn't mind blowing. It wasn't change the world different. It, none of it. Like the horror was the exact same horror you see like I in every other horror your movie. Fucking mind for saying that. I really do, but you know, really, yeah. I I don't see no difference in this and like no, no, um, no, Annabella. A, no, no, fuck you, dude. Like, there's a bunch of movies that that follow the same broad strokes, but this one does a different way. Like, like, man, I don't, I, don't I, I don't see that. I see it following the same exact strokes that every horror movie. Well, every movie. Where that, that's like saying somebody every movie, moves away. That's like they're saying they're in a new place because the new place is strange. It's strange. Oh, it really is strange. Oh, is there something behind that door? Oh, is but, there something that's like that saying, my family didn't that, tell that, me that, about that, us moving here? Yeah, but you're saying like, it's, really, gener- it's John generic. That is in the least bit. It isn't. I was, really? I, I just named you like four movies no, that were exactly that plot. I know, Neil, but the, the, heard, that's the that's the exact plot to Nightmare on Elm Street too. Uh, yeah, it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> like this is this is not Nightmare on Elm Street two. You want to think, man? This is like not, this is just no, like Nightmare on Elm Street two. You actually scared the shit out of me. No, I'm just saying, <laughs> like, like, like. It, you're saying like it's just like this movie. It's not. It's not at all. It has the same broad strokes like like uh, you know unknown shit. But like like you're saying it's just like every other horror film. And it's fucking not, dude. I walked out of this. Uh, the audience audience was full when they were like, "That was a weird movie." It was a weird movie. It's a fucking weird movie. But it's uh, not like it's it's, it's not it's not like it's not like ripping shit off. And it's not like like uh, it's uh, to me. I found it unique and cool. All right, I mean, but you'll just find it like I've seen this movie, which is crazy to me. But um, but okay, uh, you know, uh, I I gave my score last time, which is one this one. Uh, three point five. Four point one for me. Four point one for me. I really yeah. It was like I said. It was it was the thing that that knocked the movie out. The reason that this movie was good watch was because Hunter just knocked it out of the park. I believed every part that she went through. I believe everything that happened. Dan Stevens, evil genius, madman. I mean, yes, please give me more of that. Um, but it, it was a story that was just so common. That like, is so bullshit. Girl, that is teenage such girl bullshit, goes dude. to a scary place. There's no way you predicted what this movie is going. That last half, there's no fucking way you would have predicted that. In the, not in a million years. Really, Chris? Yeah, really. I didn't predict that. I don't think you knew the fuck was going on to the last <laughs> half. The last half. I of- know. I knew exactly what the fuck was going on. I don't think you did, but that's okay. I. All right. Well, you, you can still believe that in your yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. Four point one for me. Uh, Neil Martin, Tomatoes. dot com. What's the audience score for Cuckoo? Uh, audience score is probably forty eight percent. Sixty one percent. Sixty one percent. Cool. Yeah. What's the critic score for uh, what Cuckoo? Um. Seventy-two percent. Really close. Certified fresh is seventy-eight percent. Nice. Yeah. Christian Sensen says, uh, "This directed with inventive flair by director Tillman Singer, while giving flavorful personality to stars Hunter Schaefer and Dan Stevens, Cuckoo is a madcap madhouse horror that's on the right side of the range." I review bad review and a good review. Um, this is from Timothy Lee, Geeks of Color. He says, "Everything about Cuckoo is insufficient, and not fun to watch." Five out of ten, <laughs> and this is a uh, this is from uh, Eric Childress of Movie Madness podcast. He says, "Who works as much as sensory horror alongside a wackadoo plot that may be entirely comprehensible in conversation afterwards, but keeps on the edge the edge with solid performances by Andrew Schaefer 
and uh, Dan Stevens. And if there's one thing we all agree on, Dan Stevens and Hunter Schaefer are great in this. Um, both you and I can say that. Uh, but you guys can watch this in theaters. It'll probably show up in streaming not too long. Uh, these movie really movies that this don't stay in theaters after long after, you know, we get borderlands and Yeah, it'll out. probably get knocked out quickly, especially with all the boom, big blockbusters yeah, in the, yeah. the, the movie. Yeah. I mean, like, there's a movie we could have watched. Um, what was uh, the it's one that, that sucked in the Deadpool? What is, um, what is what was the one uh, with Blake Lively in it, which is now oh, considered? Wait, 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 it's with us that one, dude. That that you wanted to see that? You wanted to see that really? I, I we need to see it now because uh, it is now one of the top ten movies of 2024. I, remember I saw a preview for it. And it was with Leah, and they're like the global sensations. Like I've never heard of this fucking thing. It is with us. But, yeah, it's it's seriously in the top ten sell uh, yeah. movies on the top ten of the year yeah. of money. That's like crazy. It's, it's that it's it's one of the movies that is like it's it's in the top ten. Have you heard? Of have you heard money of the movie? Have you heard this movie before? The before you no, same, yeah. no, not until like doing the news segment for this week. Yeah, I, I was like, I was looking, I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> the yeah. end of us. Uh, so when I, when I saw it, I was uh, in line for Deadpool. When I was leaving, and apparently AMC was getting like notebooks with this. I'm like, what the fuck movie is this? So I asked, what movie is this for? And he's like. Oh, it ends with us. I'm like, I, I, mean, I walked up. I'm like, what the fuck is? I've never even heard of this movie, but apparently it's a, uh, it's yeah, it's a, uh, it, it's a, uh, it's a sensation. Everybody is. Well, let, let's read the synopsis on this. Synopsis, I'm sorry. Quick, where's, I'm gonna get to it. The end of us. Here we go. I'm pulling it up right now. It ends with us. Adopted from the from the Cloney Hover novel, Lily overcomes a traumatic childhood to embark on a new life. A chance meeting with a neurosurgeon sparks a connection, but Lily begins to see sides of him that remind her of their parents' relationship. <sighs> this sounds like a Daniel Steele book or something like that. It does. And then now that I'm looking at it, no, we're not covering that. Um, here's, something, here's something that we will cover. Here's something that we will cover, Chris. Uh-huh. Are you ready for yeah, this? Yes. So while we were uh, on talking on this good old subject of movies uh-huh. and stuff, my one of my friends went to the movies today yeah, with his kids. What do you see? Not, he saw Alien, and he <laughs> actually got, yeah, the Romulus or whatever. Yeah. And he actually got the real popcorn cans, oh, he and he took a picture of it. Oh, that's There's dope. the real popcorn. That's can. awesome. That is pretty fucking dope. I'm a, I, I kind of want that. I, I want that. I want that over here. Is, where did he get it? Over where, here. Where, where did he get it? Was it Regal or is it? Like... Uh, yeah, yeah. And, um, I don't know where. I didn't look at exactly. I just where. hope. I, I, just... I go to MC Saturday. I hope they still have them because if they have that, I want that. I'm no, gonna... they. You know they won't. Not by Saturday. Come on now. Uh. That's fair. You know that. That's that, that's not true. But Alien Romulus is the one we're doing, and then uh, Jackpot with Jack uh, John oh, Cena yeah. and Alcofina is the other yeah. one we're doing. Because um, I don't care what the fuck you guys said. I got friends that have already seen Jackpot, and they have sent me information, and they're like, "Dude, you are gonna laugh your ass off to this movie." Uh, it, and it's if pretty I common trust that my friends. Uh, it's pretty common that uh, John Cena is a movie. I'm gonna belly laugh at least once. So. Yeah, at least once, and that and that's all that matters. If John Cena can make you laugh at least once, you know I, I'm going to talk about time with men, with men. You know, with men, with men. You know, when you dress up in a Windu costume and scare your Latino neighbors. You know, I'm talking about when men were men. You know, when you adopt a sick child just so you can get a free presentation from John Cena. When men were men. <laughs> well, maybe one day. Uh... <laughs> But, yeah. Sorry, that was from Casey Thomas. If you don't know Casey the Rocket from Kill Tony, I'll give him props. That, that's exact stolen from, from him. They're, they're back. They're, you know they're in Austin now, right? Like all, all those Kill Tony and Joe Rogan. I know, but that's so far of a drive. It's still an eight-hour drive one way, bro. Austin's dope, though. I love Austin. You've been there, right? Oh, okay, you drive down here this weekend, and we're going to off. Wait a minute. <laughs> I got Josie Scott this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Next weekend, I don't think I got anything. Next week, you drive down. You drive down here. And I'll drive us halfway, and you can drive the... No, wait a minute. Your driving sucks. Uh, <laughs> it does. I love your driving. Oh, look. There's my new chair, by the way. That's my new front row chair. Oh, yeah. You can bring it with you? Can you bring it with you? I don't know. That's my new front row chair from WWE the other day. How many... Like, you, see, you, wait, do you, just, you can take it out with you? 
Yeah, you, that's part of the thing. Okay, so you, you, you that one's colorful though. I'm very happy. It looks so, like a comic book. So you know? in, in, like, a, in like a couple of years, you just have like seven or eight chairs that say VIP. On um, Logan doesn't. My buddy Logan, he does not even take his chairs home anymore. He yes, hands them out to people. Okay. Yeah, he has so many that he's just like, I don't. If unless it's an important event. Yeah. <laughs> If it just says VIP universe or VIP experience, he doesn't care. But like, how often care. when you're watching wrestling do you sit down? A lot, okay. actually. You don't want to stand in there, especially in your front row. You don't be the asshole at six foot and fucking standing in everybody's way. Uh, dude, I have I have a couple friends that are, like, every time I hug them, I feel like they're my dad because I'm so short and I'm at their chest level. So I'm like, I feel like I'm like hugging my dad or something. Cause no, like, no, I totally get that. Uh, but you're I tall. Totally you get don't it. get that. Like You don't get that ever because you're tall. And I'm over here. So like, next time I see you, I'm going to give you a hug, and I'll be my chest is in your, at your heart area, and you'll be like, Little boy, <laughs> you know, I feel like it's hugging my... my my buddy, my buddy Jason that I uh, that I said it was originally yeah. from uh, yeah. Kansas. Um, he's way bigger than me, and like hugging him's like hugging my daddy. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love it. He's like he's the most he's the most gentle giant in the world, man. He's like one of the coolest dudes ever. Man, hugging him sometimes I feel like I'm a little kid again. I'm like ah, <laughs> but because he's so much bigger than me. And that's saying so when you're bigger than me, man. <laughs> when you make me feel small. You're six. You're six. A, what? Six one? Six? No, I'm, no, I'm six. I'm I'm six, and I'm two sixty. Okay. I'm about two sixty, two sixty five in between right. there. Have it goes I'm, up and down. Have we myself? I'm five six, so I'm just a short guy. Uh, but uh, I'm. Yeah. I, I think I'm ready to. Oh yeah, you can find some line. We 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 just been running around yeah. for the last five minutes. Yeah, we have. <laughs> You we, some... we just been chilling. Hey, everybody is still viewing us. Yeah, Woo! Yeah. We're not even talking about movies uh, I anymore. I think we're both just stoned and we're just like, yeah, what up? I'm just drinking beer. Uh, you guys want to find someone who's done stuff down that word? Drinking beer. W2Mnet.com. That's w number two. And is the net. You'll find us there. All a bunch of the cool podcasts. We're uh, XMTS Podcast from Instagram TS Podcast. Uh, Facebook the console streams on the podcast. I think you said that maybe. Uh, Patreon.com. I said just said that. You can find us at Bonfire, such means I'm sucking something new. Uh, also, Tipo, we get Neil, uh, sorry, at Blackwood Hyphen Productions. You'll find uh, Neil there along with a bunch of the stuff he's made. Uh, you can find us on, um, I think that's it, actually. Yeah, anywhere you find podcasts, such means I'm sucking something new. Like, subscribe, do all that shit. Neil, what are your small businesses? If you got a small business, just let me know. Let us know. You can email us, message us, send a pigeon, whatever, and we'll advertise your business right here. Our movies don't suck and some do to our thousands of listeners, our millions of followers at any one of our platforms. Chris, let's get out of here. That's another episode of Movies Don't Suck and Some Do. My name is Neil. And I'm Chris. And remember, guys, no matter how hard you try, just remember, in a fight, don't be the instigator. If not, they might lock you up in the mental house because you might be cuckoo. Have a good night.